What's up, Hippie Fam? It's Mike back at it today with another how-to video. And today I'm going to be teaching you how to cut down your carbon fiber stair tube on your carbon fiber forks. Come along for this journey. Cheers. So to get started with this project, you're going to need a few tools. First, you're going to need your Allen keys or Allen wrenches, Allen spanners, whatever part of the world you're from. You're going to need these bad boys to obviously dismantle all this. You're going to need a hacksaw or some sort of saw. And then I use a stem because I don't have a vice or anything. So this is kind of a, a hack that I do, but this is not recommended because you might lose a finger or two and I'm not responsible for you losing your fingers. I'm just showing you how I do it. I'm not telling you this is how you should actually do it. So service your bike and customize your bike at your own risk. So let's get to it with dismantling this bike. So the first step you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to remove that wheel. If you got a quick release, you're just gonna pour your quick release scooter out and unwind it a bit and it should just drop out from the dropouts, just like that. After you've removed your wheel, you're then gonna to wanna to go ahead and remove any clips that are holding your brake line hose, whether it's cable actuated or hydraulic actuated, you wanna get this clip off not sure exactly how to get these clips off. I think you just have to grab like a uh, flathead and just wiggle it in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab an Allen key and that should hopefully work. Let's just try to like wiggle an Allen key up in there. But it seems like a flathead is probably the better solution. Oh, there we go. What I'll do is I'll just move that like that and clip that back on there. That's removed now. And then we're gonna go ahead and move on to removing the brake caliber. All right, so now that we're focused in on the brake caliper, uh, what I'll do is I'll always put a uh, block in there. This is just blocks, because these are cable actuated hydraulic brakes, so the pistons still can um, get pushed in. So I just go ahead and I just slide that in there. The uh, pads are a little worn, so it won't go in all the way. Uh, my bike, well, usually it's pretty standard. I see this on all of them. It takes a five mil Allen key. I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen these up because you don't want that attached when we drop these. And you might as well just remove them completely, not just loosen them. All right, so it seems that I actually have um, I have these spaced out. I wonder. Oh yeah, I do have these spaced out. I guess that they were rubbing. That's cool. Just got to remember that. If you have spacers in between your caliper, and um, I guess you'd call these the stanchions because, <laughs> because there's no suspension. The whole thing would be a stanchion. So after you, you've removed your brake caliper, it's now time to mark off where you're going to cut your stair tube. So I usually leave the um, bolts on the stem clamped and then I will remove this top cap. And what this will do is this will still allow the fork to be attached to the bike and allow you a stable position to actually mark your stair tube. So what I actually want to do is I actually want one of these spacers or um, let me see if I can get that in there like that. I want one of these spacers in here at the bottom here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick that right there and I'm going to put a mark right here and let it dry. So I'm just going to take my paint marker and I'm going to make a mark right at the base like this. And I'm going to let that dry there. And once that's dry, I'm going to disassemble it all and we're going to take it over to the table. All right, so now that our line is dry right here, we're gonna go ahead and loosen up these stem bolts right here. And it does take a size four Allen key. So let's go ahead and crack those bolts. Now, since this is a carbon steer tube, uh, don't forget the torque setting is six Newton meters. If you go over that, you might start here. You might start to hear the carbon crack, which means that you've over torqued your stuff. So um, I always torque it six Newton meters no matter what, because I'm not trying to like snap my stuff. 
All right, so now that we've got the stem loosened, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull up on our bars and release them there. And what I do is I just let them dangle because I mean, these aren't hydraulic hoses or anything, so I'm not really too concerned um, about it stretching or anything or kinking the hose. No, that works. All right, after you've got that set up, you're gonna sometimes hammering that. There we go, hammer that up. And then you're gonna pull off all your cups, seals, all that good stuff. This is just dangling like this. And bearings are pressed in there, so this should be good. And just lower that through the bottom. And there you go. Got a four. Oh, wow. I forgot how light this is. But there it is. Let's go over to the table. All right. So now that we've got our forks off, we're going to. This is the method. So now we've. So now that we've got our forks off, we're going to go ahead and start the process of cutting the stirrer tube. So what I do, because I don't have a clamp or anything, is I will take a old stem that I have laying around. Just make sure that these are loosened so you can get it around it. And these are already loosened because I used these before. And you are going to take this, put it over like this. This is going to be your guide. And just line it up. And what you want to do is you want to have it like, a, like one or two millimeters below that mark. And the uh, reason for this is because when you put that top cap back on, it's going to compress everything and you want a space between your top cap and uh, this mark area so you can, um, so it can actually compress the bearings. So we're going to drop that down a couple of millimeters to compensate and then just tighten that up. I don't want to over tighten it because like I told you before, this is carbon. I uh, cannot have it 9 to 10 newton meters at all. 6 newton meters in carbon paste. And now what I do is I'll just take my hacksaw and I will literally use this as a guide to protect my hand and I will cut this. So let's get to it. So now that you've got that cut off, you're going to go ahead and loosen your clamp and then you're going to take sandpaper and just file around the edges just so you get rid of any sharp edges when you're putting your, uh, your bearing cups on or the seals and all that. And little disclaimer is you're going to want to wear a mask. It's not a good idea to uh, inhale that stuff. But now, Take sandpaper, like got rough edges. I'm just gonna go ahead and just sand them down. And it's carbon, you don't have to go crazy with it. Um, there you go. You've got a uh, nice cut stair tube. All right, so once you've got your uh, stair tube cut down and all cleaned out inside, you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna take your carbon assembly place and uh, I use the finish line carbon grip. Uh, you, there's many out there. Use whatever you prefer. This is what was on sale. And so you're just going to go ahead and put it all inside there. And even if you want to get a little crazy with it, you can go ahead, put some actually on this part. And then we're going to reinsert it. All right, once you've got it all lubed up with your carbon fiber grip, which is actually not lube at all, gonna make sure it sticks in there just gonna insert it in there make sure it is flush you always want to make sure it's nice and flush and then you're gonna take your six mil allen key and we're gonna tighten that down to six newton meters so what I do is I usually just tighten it down by hand till it's not spinning and then I will grab my torque wrench all right so once you've got that inserted and it's sitting all flush as you can see Right there, it's all flush. You're gonna take your torque wrench and uh, you're gonna set that to six newton meters. All right, that's six newton meters. And now it's in there and it should not go anywhere. Let's go reinstall this on the bike. All 
right, so now we're back over at the bike. And we're going to go ahead and I usually just apply a dab of grease right through here just in case. Because, you know, you got metal on metal with the bearings. And so that will stop any clicking or, you know, metal on metal noise that you sometimes get from your headsets. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a dab. All right. And now it's time to insert. You got to make sure all the wires are still oriented the correct way. And you got to figure out how these are running. And now we put our locking ring here. Now we've got our base. Got our ring right here. And if I measured this correctly, I shouldn't have to add any additional spacers. But let's just double check this theory. Oh, God. So it turns out my spacing was a little bit off, which I didn't factor in that top cap area. All right, and all right, and now we install our spacer, and hopefully this will fit. And epic, perfect. We got a slam stem, and go ahead and add this. Now I'm wondering if I want to install. I have Garmin stems, like stem caps. I'm debating if I want to run one of them. Or if I just want to run the extendy thing. But let's go ahead and we can touch that like that. All right, and once you've got that on, it's time to reattach your stem cap if I could ever get this out of this hole. All right, so now that we've got the stack all figured out, and now it's time to put your top cap on. So I just slam that baby on there, put a little bit of grease on the end of this bolt, whatever grease you got laying around, doesn't really matter. I usually use white lithium grease, but this time I, uh, I've got slick oleum laying around, so I just dab some of that on. That will uh, help the bolt from not getting stripped or anything like that. And I'm just going to make sure that this is just down. All right, so now it's time to reattach your brake caliber. So I had these spaced out, so I need to make sure that I have these little tiny silver uh, washers in between here when I do this. So what I'll do is I insert this first and then I'll put the washer on it through like this. If I can get my fingers right, you know. And then I'll go ahead and insert this like this. Now you want to make sure you're not stripping these. So just finger tight. That's on like that. Same thing with the one down below. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reattach this with the C-clip. And that sits like that. And I had a little cable protector chilling right here. So it didn't like mess up the carbon. And that's reattached. And now we can go ahead and we can reattach our wheel. All right. When reattaching the wheel, you just want to make sure your disc brake is lined up in the slot before jamming it in there because you can bend your disc brake rotor. So I'm saying that came again in dropouts. And then just gonna tighten your quick release or if you have through axles, you know, same thing. Just tighten it up to what the specs are on the actual fork. All right. And the wheel is back on. So now that we've got the front of the bike together, it's now time to adjust the brakes. I do this when the bike's up on the stand just because it's easier to grab the front brake and then I can do everything that I need to do down below. So piece of advice, keep your bike on the bike stand if you have a bike stand. If not, if you have cable actuated brakes, flip your bike upside down. 
I do not recommend flipping your bike upside down if you're running hydraulics because the air will just float down up yeah, down to the caliper and then you'll have mushy brakes and then you have to go through that process of bleeding or even doing the lever trick. But we're getting sidetracked here. So what I do is you want to make sure that it is finger tight all the way down. So you don't you want to be able to wiggle. And then you're going to squeeze your lever. If you have hydraulics, squeeze it a couple times. So mine is cable actuated hydraulics. So I have hydraulic pistons in this part. And then after you squeeze it a couple times, just wiggle it, make sure it's all there. Go ahead and finish torquing these all the way down. I torque these to seven Newton meters on aluminum forks or even like, for instance, my uh, 36, my Fox 36. I'll tighten these down to six Newton meters. Uh, this carbon fork does have aluminum threads on it so I usually do six on this one and then you should hopefully not have a rotor that bounces off the brakes now let's see which mine's rubbing but I'm not sure if that's because it's just out of place but we'll go ahead and fix that later on they're aligned right now, I can see it's just only a little bit off. And let's go ahead and drop this bike down and finish straightening out the bars and getting everything torqued down. All right, and there she is. She is all done. And so, we got the fork shaved down and it's sitting all flush now. Absolutely a beaut. And so hopefully this geometry should make it to where I'm more comfortable.